This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, I'm going to read Yom Tov Rav Oisai. Uh, upcoming Purim. I want to discuss a subject, a very important topic, in the formulation of the Yom Tov of Purim, which is different than any other Yom Tov. When it comes to any other Yom Tov, all of Klal Yisrael celebrate the same day. And unusually, when it comes to Purim, we celebrate the occasion of the salvation of Purim depending on what type of city you live in. If you live in an open city, you celebrate the 14th. If you, ce- if you live in a walled city, you celebrate on the 15th. The Ramban, in his Chidushim, in the be- very beginning of Masech the Megillah, wonders. He says, Ani Marau al kacha umahigia alehem says Ramban. What did the sages see fit to do something like this? La sois Yisrael agudos b'mitzvah hazu to make Klal Yisrael agudos different groups in this mitzvah. Even though there's no. In other words, why fragment the Jewish people? I mean, Haman said, So the one Yom Tif you want everyone to celebrate in unison is Purim. What do we do? It's the one Yom Tif that uh, depends where you live. Says Ramban, even though maybe technically it's not a violation of Lois Siskoi to do, but Lechatchila, why formulate it that way? Furthermore, says Ramban, where do we ever see precedent to have such a thing? The Torah says, Torah Achas, Mishpat Echad, Yielachem, called the Tikkun Rabbanon, Kein Doi Raisa Tikkun. By Doi Raisas, we have uniformity. Why by Mitzvah de Rabbanon did the rabbis formulate it? One mitzvah, one way, one mitzvah, one, uh, depending on what city you live in. Now, it's very interesting that. It's very interesting that the Chassam Soifer addresses this question. And the Chassam Soifer says in the Torah, Moshe, and I think we could enhance uh, what the Chassam Soifer says, uh, how, who are we to enhance the Chassam Soifer, but we're, I'm only saying it, I think we can enhance the Chassam Soifer with another Chassam Soifer. Chassam Soifer says, we know Limadat Torah is the most important mitzvah, it's the most important activity in this universe. If not for Limadat Torah, the world could not exist. Therefore, says Chassam Soifer, the mitzvah of Purim is an all-encompassing mitzvah. We have to hear the Megillah, give Mishalach Manus, Matanas Lavyoinim, Su'uda. And then there's not a lot of time for Lima Da Torah. If all of Klal Yisrael would celebrate Purim on the same day, then there would then perhaps Chas Shalom, maybe there would be a day that nobody's learning Torah. So what we do is we alternate Purim, where some Jews celebrate Purim on one day and some on another day. This way, there is never a, a moment in time. There's never a, a juncture where. There's never a juncture that nobody is learning Torah. Now, we could add, there's a famous promise of the Chassam Soifer. Chassam Soifer writes in Jerusha Ma'agada is Chassam Soifer, that anyone who engages in Talmud Torah between Megillah Delilah and Megillah Deyoyim, Muftach Loi Shu Ben Oilam Haba. Chassam Soifer brings from his Rebbe, Rav Mendel Lilog, who in turn had a tradition from the Shev Yaakov. That anyone who engages in Talmud Torah between Megillah Delayla and Megillah Deyoyim, Muftach Loi Shubeno Elam Abba. By the way, in order to be Mekayim that, we're going to have a special shir tonight, 9.45, same channel. If anybody, just a short shir, this way we could be Zoycha to have Talmud Torah Barabim. It's not a bad thing to be Muftach Achelek in Elam Abba. Chassam Sarver just says, Kach Kibalti. So since learning Torah on on Purim is so vital and essential. Moreover, Chida writes in the Lev David in Jerush Chavtes that if Klal Yisrael on Purim would accord themselves with great Kedusha and spend the day engaged in the mitzvahs and the rest of the day in Talmud Torah, we would destroy Amalek and the Geula would come. So Purim is a very powerful day of Limad Torah. Therefore, we have this idea, we have two different days of Purim so that someone is always learning on Purim. At the end of the shir, I want to share with you what the Ramban himself says. And now I want to present a new Mahalach. This is the Mahalach of Rabbi Yonis and Ibishitz, 
Many people ask, are we going to have a Rav Yonis and Eibeshitz this year? My friend Avram Izon said, well, what's, there's no Rav Yonis and Eibeshitz share this year. So we have to have some shear on Rav Yonis and Eibeshitz, even though this is not the first time I'm saying this Nikuda over, but Ein Beis HaMedosh Beli Chidosh. And at the end of the share, I want to share with you what the Ramban himself says. There's a concept that Mordechai HaTzadik was equivalent to Moshe Rabbeinu. The Medrash says, Ish Yehudi Haya Bishushana Bira Ish Malamid Shaya Mordechai Shokol Bedoiroi Kemoisha Bedoiroi. Mordechai was equal to Moshe. It says Moshe was also an Ish. Viha Ish Moshe Anav Ma'id. Just like Moshe stood in the breach, like it says, Vayoimer Lahashmidam Lule Moshe Bechiroi. Mordechai also was Doiresh Toivla Amoi Vidoiver Shalom Lechal Zaroi. Moshe taught Klal Yisrael Torah, Dachsiv Re'eli, Madati Eschem, Chukim Mishvatim. Mordechai taught Klal Yisrael Torah, like it says, Divrei Shalom, Ve'emes, and the Torah is Emes, Emes Kenevi Al Timkar. There's an equivalency. Obviously, Moshe Rabbeinu is greater. It's one of the Yud Gimel Ikrim. Nevertheless, there's a certain comparison between Moshe and Mordechai. By the way, the Zayar HaKadosh says that Besides the fact that Moshe was the greatest Jew, he also encompasses all of Klal Yisrael. Moshe Klala the Klal Yisrael. The Chida brings down that every Talmud Chacham has a spark of Moshe Rabbeinu in him. That's why sometimes in Shas, if an Amoira says a good Svara, the Lashon is Moshe Shaper Kamrit. Moshe said good. Moshe said well. Every Talmud Chacham has a spark of Moshe Rabbeinu. Let's talk about when Moshe Rabbeinu passed away. We know Moshe Rabbeinu passed away on Zion Adar. But there is some kind of unclarity regarding when, what day of the week did Moshe pass away. On the one hand, we know Shabbos by Mincha, we say Tzidkas Chat Tzedek. Toysus and Menachas brings in the name of Rav Sar Shalom Gain that we say Tzidkas Chat Tzedek because Moshe passed away at that time. That's why at that moment... We're not Oisik in Torah, because we say, Chacham Shemes, Kol Batei Midrashah Shabi'ir Betelen. Question. Question. But Moshe Rabbeinu said, I'm 120 years old today. Today I'm 120. And if he died on Shabbos, then how could he write, I'm 120 today? Right? Listen carefully. How could you say we say Tzidkazcha because Moshe died on Shabbos by Mincha? But Moshe said, I'm 120 today. So how did he write the words, I'm 120 today on Shabbos? It's a, it's a Pele. Furthermore, Tysus asks, so one question is, how could Moshe say, I'm 120 today if he died on Shabbos? Furthermore, Seder Olam is mashma that Zayin Adar, the day that Moshe died, was Friday. Furthermore, the Rush asks, we have a Medrash, the Rush in Arvei Psachim brings, that on the day that Moshe passed away, he wrote 13 Sifrei Torah. So aside from the fact that it's very hard to write 13 Sifrei Torah one day, but how could he have written 13 Sifrei Torah on the day he died if it was Shabbos? So basically we have three questions in the Rishonim. Taisva Simenachas asks, how could Moshe have written on the day of his Petira, Ben Mea Ve'esrim Shan Anoichi Ayayim? Number two, how could... In Seder Olam it's Mashma, Moshe died on a Friday. And number three, Chazal say Moshe wrote 13 Sifrei Torah on the day that he died. Comes the Rebbe Rav Yonison, Rav Yonison Ibishitz. And he quotes none other than the Ramami Pano. The Ramami Pano was one of the great early Italian Mikubalim, was a student of Rabbi Yisrael Saruk. Rabbi Yisrael Saruk was a student of the Arizal before Rabbi Chaim Vital. The Ramami Pano says something Oyoim Venoira. He says that Moshe Rabbeinu died. In two stages. His neshama left him on Friday. On Vav Adar. His, gu- his nefesh, his living spirit, left him on Shabbos, on Zayin Adar. 
Therefore, he wrote the Sifrei Torah on the day that he died. He wrote them on Friday. He wrote them, them on Friday. That's the day that his Neshama left. He wrote 13 Sifrei Torah. That's when he wrote, Ben Meya Ve'esrim Shana Anoichi Hayoim. Because think about it. If you're born on Zayin Adar, you finish 120 years on Vav Adar. His Nefesh left on Zayin Adar. Ah, says Rav Yonis and Ibishitz, according to the Ramami Pano, we have a wondrous reason why there are two different days of Purim. Now, all my friends in Eretz Yisrael and in Yushalayim, they're not going to like this. But all my friends in Kew Garden Hills or in New York, they are going to like this. It looks like right now I have more friends in uh, New York. So, I think Al Piroiv, Doi Reish Toiv La'amoi V'doi V'shalom, uh, um, uh, this year will be Ratzoi Leroy Vechav. Says Rabbi Yonasan Ibishitz, the Medrash tells us Mordechai is like Moshe Rabbeinu. Every Jew has a certain achiza in the Neshama Moshe Rabbeinu. Because <coughs> Moshe Rabbeinu is Koilo Ka Neshamais. Mordechai likewise was Koilo Ka Neshamais. There's a Shaila when did Moshe Rabbeinu die? Did he die? on Shabbos, or did he die on Friday? The Ramami Pano tells us, that, Moshe Rabbeinu's guf, and his nefesh left on Shabbos, his neshama left on Friday. Now, the terminology open city dweller and walled city dweller in a way is like a mashal. One of the things my Rabbeinu asked the Maraglim to find out is, Ha'im b'machanim o'y b'mivtsarim. Do they live in walled cities or do they live in open cities? If they live in walled cities, they're not strong. If they live in open cities, they're fearless. We have a Gemara in Erevin. The Gemara in Erevin says, Klal Yisrael says to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, God, don't judge us like walled city people. They have Gezela, Arai Yeshua, Shav Shua, Sheker. Let's go out to the field and I'll show you Tamidei Chachamim that are Oisik in Torah, Mitoi Chachak. People who live in the walled city, they're sometimes, they're, they don't have Bitachon. And for good reason, because sometimes when they're sinners, they can't rely on God's protection, they need to rely on the wall. Someone who is an absolute tzaddik, he's called an open city dweller. He doesn't need, he doesn't need man-made protection. This is explicit in Shoftim. Chadlu for Razoin be Yisrael. Let the open city cease among Israel. Chadelu. Ad shakamti devoira, shakamti aim be Yisrael. By the way, the Navi Zechariah prophesied, Perazois Yeshu Yisrael. The day will come that the Jewish people will live in open cities. By the way, that was fulfilled. Moses Montefiore said when he expanded Jerusalem to Mishkenos Hashananim and to Yemin Moshe, until then the Jewish people were only li- able to live in the wall. But after that, the Jewish people were able to live beyond the walls. There's an idea, walled city represents when we're not on a high madrega. We need the protection of the wall. The Navi Zechariah says in the future we'll be able to live in, in open cities. We know that the 13th of Adar is a day that was transformed from Evel Yamtaif. Why, says Rabbi Anasin Ivishitz? The Avelos of Moshe Rabbeinu ended on the, on the 13th of Adar. He died on the 7th, 8th, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And that's when his neshama left him. That's when Moshe Rabbeinu's neshama left him. Now Moshe is Koyla Kala Neshamais. These are all the tzaddikim of the Doris, that are achos benishmas Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu gave a simen. The prazim of b'mivtsarim, one who's weak lives in a walled city. So to tzaddikim, tzaddikim lived in the open cities, and they could rely on their righteousness. Those who are not tzaddikim, they live in the walled cities. <coughs> Therefore, says Rabbi Yonis and Ibishitz, tzaddikim gemurim, 
they are connected in the neshama of Moshe Rabbeinu, who passed away on Zion Adar, and as Avelos ended on the 13th. So therefore they rested on the 14th. How this fits in exactly in the Lushan of the Rush, who brings a mimer of Chazal, that apparently, what the, the way Rabbi Yonason Abishitz is saying it, is that Moshe Rabbeinu's neshama left on Zion Adar, and his nefesh left on Ches. So those who are connected to the neshama of Moshe Rabbeinu, his Avelos ended on the 13th. That's when the Neshama of Moshe Rabbeinu was complete, was nostalgic. So those who are connected to the Neshama of Moshe Rabbeinu They are connected to the 13th of Adar and they rested on the 14th of Adar. So people who live in the open cities are tzaddikim gemurim. They celebrate Purim on the 14th. Those who are connected to the nefesh of Moshe Rabbeinu, so his nefesh left on eight, the 8th of Adar, and it was kolehus nestalek on the 15th of Adar, excuse me, on the 14th of Adar, they rest on the 15th of Adar. So let's say the Cheshben clearly. Moshe Rabbeinu wrote 13 Sifrei Torah on the day he died. The day he died was Zion Adar. Zion Adar was a Friday. Moshe Rabbeinu wrote 13 Sifrei Torah and he wrote, Today is my last day. And that was Erev Shabbos. And that's when Moshe Rabbeinu's Neshama left. And then the Avelos completed on the 13th. And those who are connected to the Neshama of Moshe Rabbeinu they rest on the 14th. However, on Shabbos, that's when Moshe Rabbeinu physically died. Those who are connected to the Nefesh of Moshe, the physical Moshe, it was Nestalek on the following Shabbos, and they rest on Purim on the 15th. So it comes out, the Iker Purim is the 14th, Rabbi Sai in Chutzlaretz. You hear this? The Iker Purim is not in a walled city. This is the Kabbalistic reason for Purim. But I want to share with you, even according to the Ramban that we're about to learn, the Iker Purim is also the 14th. Watch this. Says the Ramban in his Chidush Shaman Shas, well maybe the reason why we have two different Purims is because some people attack their enemies on the 13th and they rest on the 14th, and some attack their enemies on the 14th and they rested on the 15th. The Ramban says, no, I don't buy that. I don't accept that answer. The Ramban says, here's the definitive answer. If you look in Perk Tess of Megillah Sester, it says, Al Kain Hayudim Haprazim Hayoshivim Bore Haprazois Oisim Eis Yam Arba Asar Lechoydesh Adar. Did you realize that in the first record of Purim, it only talks about celebrating Purim on the 14th. Because in year 1, they only made Purim on the 14th. You know why? Because they said, the people in walled cities were never in danger by Haman. Haman never would have got them. So in year 1, look in Megillah, in the Megillah, Parak Tess, they only enacted Purim on the 14th for open cities. They said the people on the 15th were never in danger. In year two, they realized, well, wait a second. It was only a matter of time before Haman expanded his power and probably he could have gotten into the walled cities as well. And they said, you know what, we should really celebrate Purim in the walled cities. But since the walled cities in year one did not make Purim, and there's a Sephara, they, were, they weren't in the same degree of danger, they made a different day for the people of the walled cities. So it comes out that even according to the Ramban, the Yikr Purim is the 14th. So once in a while in Chutz Aretz, we have a... By the way, it's not just Chutz Aretz, even in Eretz Yisrael, outside of Yushalayim, it sounds like there might be Kabbalistically more spiritual energy on the 14th. Practically, the Iker Purim was enacted on the 14th and only in year two was it enacted on the 15th. Rabbi Isai, this is the Mahalach of Rabbi Yonis and Ayibish, it's based on Ramami Pano. 
that the spiritual connection to Moshe Rabbeinu as Purim is the 14th, the physical connection is the 15th. The way the Ramban learns it is that the walled city people originally did not really uh, perceive the danger that they were in. I want to wish everyone a Freilich and Purim, Bracha v'atzlacha. You can join us tonight at 9.45 for the Mekayim, the Haftacha of the Chassam Soifer. I wish you all a Freilich and Purim, Bracha v'atzlacha. Kol Tov. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.